Over the last few days, Steam Frame has been absolutely everywhere. We've had price leaks flying around, new Steam VR updates with brand new eye tracking features, and Valve quietly publishing their official Steam Frame documentation. So in this video, I want to break down all the new info, every leak, rumor, data mine, and just put it all together in one place. Just quickly before we get started, there is no sponsor today, but if you want to support me in the channel, please consider subscribing and liking to stay up to date with the latest VR news. I'm also on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, and I've just made a Discord server for VR enthusiasts if you want to join. All support genuinely means the world, but all right, let's get into the video. Firstly, let's discuss the price leaks going around right now. Over the last 24 to 48 hours, you've probably seen tweets and posts like these claiming to know the Steam machine and Steam frames cost, saying things like $600, for the 512 gigabyte Steam machine, $700 for the two terabyte Steam machine, Steam frame costing $900 to $1,000, and some even saying Valve have delayed the price reveal entirely due to rising part costs. But here is the most important part. None of these prices are confirmed. There's no official Valve announcement. No trusted reports are backing it up, and no single creditable source is tying these numbers together. Right now, these are just rumors reacting to each other, not leaks being verified. And that doesn't mean that the prices won't be high or lower than expected. It just means we genuinely do not know. So until Valve or somebody trusted comes out publicly, do not trust figures that you see online. But of course, when we do know the official price, you'll be the first to know about it right here on the channel. But while the price is a mystery, something else very real is happening behind the scenes. Now this is where things start to get genuinely interesting. Thanks to the data mining work, especially from Sadly It's Bradley, we've seen brand new eye tracking related features show up directly inside the latest Steam VR update. And this matters a lot because it's not just a hardware feature. This is a system level VR software being updated before the headset is even out. We're talking about based perspective correction, gaze based reprojection and voveated sharpening options. To put that into simpler terms, Valve is using eye tracking to fix problems that VR has had for a long time. Perspective correction helps reduce distortion caused by lenses as you move your eyes. Gaze-based reprojection helps smooth out VR when performance drops by prioritizing what you're actually looking at. And here's the really important part. These features live inside Steam VR, not inside individual games. That means developers do not need to update their games for these features to work. Valve is improving VR at a platform level. So it's not just flashy marketing eye tracking. This is very practical and performance focused eye tracking being built directly into the ecosystem itself. And the fact that this is already appearing in Steam VR tells us something important, that Steam Frame isn't just a distant concept anymore. The software groundwork is actually being laid out right now. And that brings us to the biggest confirmation that we've had so far. This is the part that most people still aren't talking about enough. And honestly, it might be the most important update we've had yet. Valve has now published official Steam Frame documentation inside Steamworks. This isn't a leak. This isn't a data mine. This is Valve explaining exactly how the Steam Frame actually works. And yes, I painfully read through the entire thing. So here's what Valve has now officially confirmed. Steam Frame runs on SteamOS using the same Linux-based philosophy as the Steam Deck. Valve has obviously confirmed that PC streaming works using a dedicated USB dongle. So you plug it into your PC, it installs the Steam VR driver, and you pair the headset using a code. Very similar to Steam Remote Play. But here is the key detail that most people have missed. Once paired, Steam Frame can automatically connect when Steam VR is launched on the host PC. No connect to PC button, no extra steps every session. You open Steam VR, put on the headset, and you're in. This is a classic Valve design, reducing friction, making VR feel instant, not fiddly. Valve has also confirmed three direct ways that you can play on the Steam Frame. The first is to stream your games with a focus on low latency and high quality. Two, run games locally on the headset itself like a console. And three is to run ARM64 and Android APK apps directly on the device. This is huge because Steam Frame isn't just locking you into 
one use case. It's not PC VR only, it's not standalone only, it's both. Valve is also clear about something else and more on a negative side. If you try to run x86 PC games locally on the headset, performance will not be ideal. Those games are much better streamed from a PC. Where the Steam frame really shines is locally with the native ARM chip. But here's the interesting part, a lot of VR games already have Quest versions, which means Steam frame ports are far more realistic than people might expect. You then add eye-tracked Vovitid rendering on top of that, and standalone performance on this headset could be crazy, being very competitive and very powerful. Valve also confirms full compatibility with Steam VR and OpenXR. Unity, Unreal, Godot, and even custom engines are supported. Developers already have access to development tools, debugging tools, performance overlays, and full Steamworks integration. This is the exact same strategy that Valve used when the Steam Deck launched. Launch solid hardware, then let software improvements do the heavy lifting over time. Now there's one more detail in this documentation that I think too many people are glossing over, and it's actually one of the biggest clues about Valve's long-term plan. As we mentioned earlier, Valve is openly supporting ARM64 and Android APKs on the Steam frame. And if you've been paying attention to what's happening in Linux gaming lately, you'll know why that matters. For decades, PC gaming has basically spoken one language, x86. Most Steam games are built for Intel or AMD style chips, but the Steam frame is clearly being built around an efficiency first approach. And in VR, that usually means ARM. Better performance per watt, better thermals, better battery life, and it's why standalone headsets use it. And the obvious problem is, if Steam Frame is ARM, how do you avoid launching a headset with a tiny library on day one? And this is where Valve's bigger strategy starts to come into play. There's been a huge push lately, running x86 games on ARM using translation layers, basically making the architecture barrier less relevant over time. So when Valve says in the documentation, you can run native ARM apps and run games locally and stream from a PC, they're not just listing features, they're building a safety net, native ARM and APK titles for true standalone, PC streaming for full, fat, VR games like Half-Life Alex and compatibility improvements over time so more Steam libraries become playable across different chips. This is exactly the same approach they took with the Steam Deck. Launch with a strong baseline, then iterate aggressively through software until it becomes unstoppable. And now all of this brings us back to the price confusion. The Steam frame doesn't just fit into one category. It's not just a console or just a PC VR or just a standalone, it does all free. If Valve prices it like a console, it's disruptive. If they price it like a high-end PC, it's arguably justified, just overly expensive. That's why speculation is everywhere right now. Not because anybody knows the price, but because the Steam frame doesn't have a clear comparison point. And once Valve finally makes it official, you'll be the first to know right here on the channel. So please consider subscribing and liking if you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and peace.